Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has arrived in France where he will attend a special event commemorating the 80th anniversary of the Allied landings in Normandy. Posting in Telegram app before the visit, Zelensky said important events and meetings will be held to strengthen our state and strengthen the unity of all those who respect human values and life. This event and day serve as a reminder of the courage and determination demonstrated in the pursuit of freedom and democracy. Allies defended Europe's freedom then, and Ukrainians do so now. Unity prevailed then, and true unity can prevail today, the Ukrainian leader stated. He added that there is also a special event ahead, in which we are very honored to take part, the commemoration of the 80th anniversary of the Allied landings in Normandy. Zelensky will meet U.S. President Joe Biden on the sidelines of the meeting, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said earlier. While he's in Normandy, he'll have the opportunity to sit down with President Zelensky and have an engagement with him to talk about the state of play in Ukraine and how we can continue and deepen our support for Ukraine, Sullivan told reporters while en route to France. The event will also be attended by other heads of states, including British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Russians adopted new method to protect aviation from Ukrainian drones, they build protective hangars. Hangars are being built at Russian airfields to protect aviation. These shelters are designed to prevent attacks from drones and cluster munitions, as well as to hide the exact location from satellite reconnaissance. Aviation expert Konstantin Krivalap reported this on the Freedom TV channel. A fairly simple idea. Such systems are used, by and large, all over the world in the same desert when it's hot to stand in the open sun they put up such arches however the main idea is to hide the location of the aircraft he said Krivalap explained that it would be quite difficult for drones to accurately determine the location of the aircraft under such a canopy. A machine-guided drone using elements of artificial intelligence allows you to identify and distinguish targets. By comparing several pixels of the image, it can be established that this is exactly the target that needs to be hit. It's impossible to determine this with hangars. He noted, the expert also told us what other threats such Russian hangars could protect against. Do you know how meshes protect against FPV drones when the kinetic energy of the device itself, which carries the charge, is not enough to break through the mesh? The hangar will protect against this. That is, an explosion will occur on its surface. If ATA CMS with cluster warheads are fired at this airfield, the energy of the warheads will be extinguished on the hangar shell itself. This is all. It seems to me that the main thing is to hide the place where the planes are from satellite reconnaissance summed up Konstantin Krivalap. Let us recall that the Ukrainian military center reported that at the Marinovka airfield in the Volgograd region, 300 kilometers from the border, Russia began to build protective hangars. NATO is developing numerous land corridors to send American troops and weapons to the front lines in the event of a major ground war with Russia. According to the plans currently developed, American soldiers will land at one of five ports, the Daily Telegraph reports, citing sources. They will then be sent along pre-planned logistical routes to counter a possible Moscow attack. The land corridors come amid warnings from the alliance's top leadership that Western governments must prepare for conflict with Russia in the next two decades. Logistics routes have become a key priority after NATO leaders agreed at a summit in Vilnius last year to have 300,000 troops on high alert to defend the alliance. Current plans call for American troops to land at Dutch ports before and then travel by train through Germany to Poland. In the event of a Russian invasion of NATO, 
U.S. troops would arrive at the port of Rotterdam and then be sent east. But NATO is agreeing to expand routes to other ports to make sure Russia cannot cut off land lines of communication. Ukraine is suffering greatly from these Russian long-range missile attacks on logistic systems, said Lt. Gen. Alexander Solfrank, head of NATO's main logistics directorate SEC. If NATO forces coming from the Netherlands are hit by Russian bombing or Moscow's forces destroy northern European ports, the alliance plans to focus on ports in Italy, Greece, and Turkey. From Italian ports, U.S. troops can cross overland through Slovenia, Croatia, and Hungary, which shares a border with Ukraine. Similar plans exist to transport forces from Turkish and Greek ports through Bulgaria and Romania to reach the alliance's eastern flank. Plans are also being developed to transport troops through ports in the Balkans, as well as through Norway, Sweden, and Finland. In these corridors, the military will not be limited by local regulations and will be free to transport cargo without the usual restrictions. Over the past five years, SEC has been conducting audits to identify various routes that could be used to transport troops to fight the Russian invasion. Ports in Northern Europe, such as the Netherlands, Germany and the Baltic states, are considered particularly vulnerable to Russian missile attacks. Everything is created in such a way that there is the necessary stability, reliability and reserves, Sol Frank said. Following warnings that NATO has only 5% of the air defense it needs to cover its eastern flank, the SEC commander is concerned about the surface-to-air capabilities to protect its key logistic centers. Assessing the Russian war in Ukraine, we noticed that Russia attacked Ukrainian logistics bases. This leads to the conclusion that huge logistics bases will be attacked and destroyed first of all in a conflict situation. As for air defense. It is always not enough, I can't imagine a situation where you have enough air defense. This is a good example of the application of the military principle, if you want to be strong everywhere, you are strong nowhere, Sol Frank said.